today I'd like to show the HP28S scientific calculator. Uh, it's a calculator that's pretty old by today's standards. It came out in the late 80s. Um, but it does have features that were ahead of its time that in this calculator does things these days that most scientific calculators cannot do. Uh, the calculator um, it has an interesting design. It's a departure from the typical HP calculator design, which is usually just one uh, sort of brick, I would say. Um, it, has, it actually closes up and latches together. Um, uh, but aside from being um, a cover, this is actually a part of the calculator itself. Uh, so we have uh, a set of keys, mostly these are different function keys and, and letter keys, and then here we have the normal um, scientific calculator keypad. Uh, you'll notice we have things like an enter key, uh, and then weird things like uh, drop, for example. Uh, that's because this is a, an RPN calculator. Uh, HP is probably one of the few manufacturers and probably the manufacturer that made RPN successful uh, among scientists and engineers. Uh, RPN is a way of entering arithmetic expressions uh, in a fast and efficient way. So for example, if we wanted we to do RPN, you have to do things sort of in reverse. You put all the arguments, basically the things you want to operate on, onto something called the stack, which is labeled 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Uh, and then we press the button that represents our operation. So for example, for 5 times 7, we push all of the items that we want onto the stack, 5, enter, 7 enter and we see on the right hand side uh, both 5 and 7 were pushed on the stack. Um, once we push the arguments we want onto the stack uh, we do whatever our operation we want. Uh, here if we multiply them we get our results 35. From there we can actually do more operations so if we want to do 5 times 7 plus 1 well we just did 5 times 7 then to do plus 1 we can put put one onto the stack, then add. There's actually a shortcut. We don't have to push every argument on the stack. We can actually type our argument. So if we wanted to multiply that by 22, um, we don't have to push 22 onto the stack. We can actually just um, press the multiplication button right away. By doing this, we sort of build up expressions piece by piece, and we actually do not need, at any point, uh, parentheses. Uh, if we wanted to compute uh, sine of 2 times 5, for example, um, we do 2 enter 5 times, and then we open the menu for uh, trigonometric functions and we press sine. Uh, on a normal calculator, you would need to press the sine key 2 times 5, and then a close parenthesis key, and then equals here. Uh, the stack allows us to not have to do any of that. Um, after about 10 minutes of using stack operations, it, it becomes pretty easy, and then after an hour, you can become pretty fluent with it. Um, we can do very large um, calculations very quickly. There, it's, it's, you can almost translate it on the fly in your mind if you see a textbook expression and so on. Um, for example, if we were doing the quadratic formula, uh, square root of b squared minus 4ac, um, let's say a, b, and c were 1, 2, and 3, um, we can do uh, the square root of b squared, so b squared is 1, enter, 1 times, so b squared, and then 4ac, 4, enter, 2, enter, 3, times, times, subtract those and then we take the square root and then as you actually see we get a complex number here another thing that this calculator does that many don't um, not only can we operate on real numbers uh, we can also operate on um, approximate complex numbers so that's a little quick overview of RPN um, Again, this is something that was popular with most HP calculators. They still sell RPN HP calculators, and um, it's especially popular among older scientists and engineers. It was 
a time before TI brought out its popular TI-83 calculator uh, that everybody sort of got hooked on in high school. This calculator does other things. We saw a little bit that it could do complex numbers, and you can also do operations on complex numbers, so five times, for example. Um, but this calculator actually does more than just real and complex numbers. It also can operate on matrices, vectors, and so on. But more interestingly to me is this calculator can operate on symbolic expressions or algebraic expressions, which is something you only see on uh, modern graphing calculators with a computer algebra system, such as the TI-89 and the HP-50G. Um, as a little example, um, the way to enter algebraic expressions is exactly the same way as you enter any arithmetic expression. Uh, now we have these variables over here. Um, to enter, for example, x squared, we press x, push it onto the stack, uh, and then we see we have x there with uh, quotes around it. The quotes indicate that it's a symbolic or algebraic expression. Uh, if we want to square that, uh, then we push 2 onto the stack, and then we press the uh, power key, which is the little caret above the multiplication sign. And then we see we get x squared, unevaluated without any value for x in there. Um, this whole quantity here can be operated on um, with other symbolic operations. Uh, so we can add x to it, and then we can uh, actually take trigonometric functions um, and operate on it. So for example, the tangent. And we see we get the tangent of x squared plus x. Um, so that's good and fine. Uh, what's the use of this? Uh, we can actually do different sorts of um, things with it. One of the obvious way things we could do is uh, expand expressions, uh, take apart expressions, and so on. Uh, but something really useful for engineers is the ability to do uh, symbolic calculus. Um, if we can, for example, take the derivative, you can see that we have uh, a little, if the camera is clear enough, the uh, d over dx key right above the number 6. Uh, if we press that, uh, we get an error because we need to know what we're taking uh, the derivative with respect to. Uh, so we push x onto the stack. Uh, so the top expression is what we're taking the derivative of bottom expression is the variable we're taking with respect to. And now if we press um, the d over dx key, uh, you see the little thing at the top, it flickers, and then uh, we get our expression. Uh, here, sq means square, so uh, 1 plus the square of the tangent of x squared plus x multiplied by 2x plus 1. Uh, that should be a pretty obvious um, it should be pretty obvious that that's correct. It's just uh, an application of uh, the chain rule. Um, but suppose we weren't convinced that this is correct, or we wanted to know how it actually came upon this answer. Um, it might seem pretty new that things like Wolfram Alpha um, are unique in the ability to show steps, but actually uh, the ability to show steps dates back to this calculator, and perhaps before, but I don't know any examples. Uh, so if we drop the expression, uh, we can re-enter the derivative expression, but this time we're going to calculate the derivative sequentially or uh, iteratively. Um, to do this, we input the derivative expression in a different way. Here we have a way of entering algebraic expressions uh, without using the stack. Um, we press the quote key, and now we have a sort of editor um, to enter things the way we'd see it in a textbook. Uh, so we enter the derivative, and we get the little uh, differential d there. Uh, the derivative with respect to x, um, and then we enter our expression. Um, that would be the tangent of x squared. plus x, and then close paren, and then qu close quote. Uh, actually, I forgot one more parenthesis. And 
And so now we pushed this formal derivative onto the stack. With this, now we can go through using the eval key. Uh, we can evaluate the derivative one step at a time. So if you remember to calculate a derivative, uh, we sort of go inside out using the chain rule and then apply uh, sort of auxiliary rules like the um, sum and product rules uh, here. So uh, what we should expect as the first step for the derivative is to um, multiply the entire the derivative of the outside expression times um, the derivative of the inside expression. Uh, so we press the eval key once, and that's what we get. The outside expression is 1 plus the square of uh, the outside expression, which is the derivative, times, and then we have the formal derivative of the inside expression. Um, and so now we that's the first step of the computation. The next step, we press eval again, and we see that it did uh, the sum rule. It uh, distributed the uh, derivative of cross um, across the plus. Uh, we press it again. Uh, it again distributed it. Uh, we press it again and we get this final expression. Uh, from here if we wanted to do certain manipulations for example um, we could press the algebra key uh, which is over the J here and it brings up our algebra menu. Uh, let's press expand to expand whatever's on the stack. And it thinks and thinks and uh, we get this final expression. Uh, we have things like that spurious, uh, not spurious, but extra times one. Um, we can press eval and it'll perform some simplification. Uh, and we see that it's simplified. Uh, so that's a basic example of the abilities for it to do uh, symbolic math. Uh, it can also do integrals. However, the integrals aren't quite, um, it, for anybody who remembers uh, doing integrals in freshman calculus, uh, they're not very easy. There's no definite algorithm to do an integral. Um, the calculator can do numeric integration, but it can do symbolic integration. Um, it can do symbolic integration of polynomials, and since it can do uh, symbolic differentiation of expressions, we can use um, expand as a Taylor series formally and then integrate that, which the calculator can do. Um, so we can try that. Um, as an example, we will do uh, something with a nice um, integral, maybe the sine of x. Uh, so we enter um, x, enter, and then the trig menu, sine, and we have the sine of x. So we want to compute this, the integral of sine of x with respect to x, and then we have to give the order of the Taylor polynomial that we want to compute. So. Uh, for this, we'll do, uh, since sine is odd, um, the polynomial won't have every term. Uh, so we'll go out five terms. And finally, uh, we'll get rid of the um, little menu. Uh, we press the integral key, uh, which is right next to the derivative key, right above the five. And it'll think and think. And we get a, um, it's, I, I would call this a uh, sort of combination of uh, numeric and symbolic. Um, it's, it's a combination of numeric and symbolic math. It had to do numeric math to extant, expand the Taylor polynomial, and then um, it evaluated the derivative symbolically, uh, and we get a result. Um, so we'll clear this. The last thing I want to show um, is one more function of the uh, 28s, which is uh, it can actually do graphing. And I actually need to use my little uh, manual that I have here because I don't remember all the steps. Um, anyway, we 
go into the uh, plot menu. Uh, so we have another little menu there. You can see above the solve key. Also, the calculator can do, uh, it can solve equations, mostly basic things, and we actually can do operations on equations. Uh, I'll actually show a little example of that before I move on. Um, if we push X onto the stack, um, and then we push Y onto the stack, and then we equate them, uh, we get X plus uh, X equals Y. Um, now, if we now it's uh, common, especially when we're simplifying trigonometric um, equalities or, or supposed equalities, if we want to prove that they're equal, uh, we want to do an operation on both sides of the expression. Uh, so we can actually treat this expression as a um, something we can do arithmetic with. So if we want to add one to both sides, for example, we just press one and add, and it does x plus one equals y plus one. Um, again, that's a way uh, we can operate on equations and.